Okay, this is my 95 Toyota pickup truck. Um, yesterday I was driving it and my check engine light came on. Yesterday I was driving my check engine light came on. And uh, I usually don't like driving it with the check engine light on. I want to find out what it, what it was as quick as possible. So I just drove it back home and got on my motorcycle and rode it instead. But um, basically if you want a quick, easy way, if you don't have a, a scan tool, like I have a scan tool that only works on 96 and newer cars. Little Bluetooth, little Bluetooth scan tool. Um, plug it in under the dash. Your connector is going to be um, on. I think every car that I've seen, it's under the dash. It's like a, you would. Well, actually, no. I, I take that back. It's either under the dash. I think I've seen it like over here, close to the edge of the dash. Or if you have a fuse panel here, you pop the fuse panel off, plug it in, turn the uh, turn the key on, and then connect it with your phone if you have a smartphone. Or you can have software on your laptop if you have a Bluetooth uh, connectivity. There's a lot of free software out there you can download and put on your laptop, you can put on your phone. The one I use on my phone is called Torque, T-O-R-Q-U-E. And again, it only works with OBD2 compliant cars, which are, which are 96 and newer. So basically, um, if you have something older than 96, uh, this is safe to use. It's just a little jumper, as long as you connect the right pins. Different manufacturers are going to have different, um, one, different places where the little diagnostic ports are going to be. This is Toyota. Toyotas will have the little diagnosis. It says diagnosis on it or diagnostics. It'll be close to the fuse box. Usually it's close to the fuse box. Um, but they'll be on this side of the car or my Celica. It's actually on the other side over by the brake, brake fluid reservoir and the clutch, clutch reservoir. But, so... Let's say, like, okay, you, you have your check engine light just came on and you want to find out what the code is. Very easy, very cheap to do. Make a little jumper like this. I use, you can use a paper clip. It'll work just the same. Um, but I used some, just some solid copper, solid, like really thin solid copper wire that I had. I've got a drawer full of wire in the, in the house. But, um, look up online, find out which pins to connect. Since this is Toyota, see, see there's an E1. Let's see if I can connect and show. Right there where the tips of the copper are pointing, there's E1. And TE1, I actually had to look it up because I don't remember this, but um, it's really hard to remember all the little for different cars. But you'll want to jump for those two. And this is safe. You see, I'm, I'm doing it to mine. You're not going to fry anything. Just as long as you connect these two, and it's only these two. Don't worry about the other ones. Ignore those. It's act like they're not even there. Don't go probing stuff, trying to figure out what it is. So you'll jump for the connector. And then you just go and turn the key to the on position. Um, and if it's not under your hood, it would be the location of that diagnostic connector would be in your glove box. It would be um, underneath your seat. I think the, uh, the Toyota vans, they're actually under the seat because the engine is, or the mid-90s Toyota vans are actually under the seat because the engine is um, underneath, the, uh, underneath the van. I'm just going to turn the key and watch for the blink codes. Which <laughs> they're not there anymore. Oh, there it goes. Flash. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then it waits a little bit. One, two, three, no. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the blink code is 26. It flashes two short, or it flashes two, one, two, and then there's a hesitation, and then it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So, so the blink code is 26. And if there's another one, then it would show after that. So one, two, it would flash, say, four times there, then it would be a hesitation, and then it would flash once or something like that. So then you can look up on your. I printed out this paper before I came. 26. Oh, let's. Air fuel rich. Air fuel ratio rich. Malfunction. So I have a rich, uh, a rich air fuel ratio, which means that it's not burning um, at the ideal. And then it goes through possible. So it could be O2 sensor. Engine speed varies by more than 15 RPM when the proceeding. So yeah, I mean it's. It, that's mine, but I mean, depending on your code, see, like this has a nice little printout of the of the blink patterns. 
So you'll have two and then one for that one. Uh, stupid fan. So you have two and then one on that one. So it'll blink two, there's a little hesitation, and then there's one, and then there's a couple second wait. You know, and then the one above that, 14, one, or the one a couple above that, you know, one, and then there's six steady, or one, and then there, uh, one, and there's a hesitation, and then six, one, and then a hesitation, and then four. Each one of these would show a, a, a different thing. So that's a quick, easy way to, to identify your engine trouble codes. Now you're thinking like, okay, well, I don't have a Toyota. If you don't have a Toyota, I'm going to go over how to clear that in a second, actually, and then you won't have it. And then you can wait and see how long it's going to take to turn on again. So you're saying, like, okay, well, well, uh, I have a Honda, or I have a Mitsubishi, or I have a, you know, um, I know Hondas, Mitsubishis, GMs. They don't go by the same, the same blink code as this. It won't be too short, and then a little hesitation, and then too sh short again for 22. It would be like, say, 22 would be two long ones, and then two short ones, or. Uh, 24 would be two long ones, and then four short ones. So that, that's how they show 24. I think GM, Honda, Mitsubishi, and I think some other ones are like that. You know, but there's there's different locations. I think Hondas are generally on the the bottom right, the kick panel. Same with GMs. Um, so they're inside the dash. Where I have <laughs> I have a valve cover right now for my for my car. Um, just ignore that. You didn't see that. It doesn't exist. And it's gone. Um, what else was I going to say? Okay, so clearing the check engine light. So, as we showed, check engine light's on. Turn the key. You wait. And it comes on. Okay. So it shows two and then six. So right now it's blinking. All I'm going to do, a lot of people will tell you that, you know, like, oh, well, just disconnect your battery. Well, you know what? I don't want to disconnect my battery because then I'm going to have to reprogram all my stupid radio stations again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the jumper out. I'm going to take off the fuse box. I'm just going to pull the EFI relay because that's the same thing as, oh, as far as the computer knows, um, when I do this, oh, it's EFI relay is there. So that's the EFI relay. So when I pull this, all the computer knows is that it lost power. And I don't have a fuse puller in this one. But basically you pull the fuse and you don't have to reset your radio station. There we go. So I pull it out, leave it out for a little bit. I'm going to put it back in in a second. So, so right now it wouldn't start because the computer has absolutely no power. The computer that runs the car, that stores the engine codes, that um, you want to wait about 20 seconds because uh, if that engine code is being stored in, like, say, you know, it's a capacitor. Capacitors are little electronic devices. I think 20 something seconds um, takes them about 20 something seconds to discharge whenever they lose power. So they, you can't really store any. So, whatever they were, um, whatever information they were holding, um, if there is a capacitor in your computer. Um, also, oh, oh, sorry, let me finish that thought. If there is a capacitor, a computer, whatever information, there's my fuse holder. Crap. I could have used that instead of whatever. I got it out with my thumbs anyway. But if you have a fuse holder, pull out your fuse with that. It's, it, it, it's not, I don't know, it's a lot easier. You just put it around the fuse and squeeze and pull. And you put it back in with your fingers. That would have made things easier a little bit. Um, if your Man, what was I saying? So, yeah, so you wait about 20 seconds for your capacitors to discharge. So leave the fuse out. I'm just going to leave it out a little bit longer while I say some more stuff before I turn the key back on. Um, let's say you have a... Um, let's say you have a Honda, Mitsubishi, Ford. I know Ford calls their computers. They call it a PCM. I don't remember what it stands for, but different manufacturers call the computer... Um, it'll say a different thing, or the fuse, it'll say EFI fuse for electronic fuel injection. Um, this one said, I think this one said EFI. Some will say ECM, some will say PCM. Look in your manual. Actually, and uh, also you can you know, look in your manual to get this. Not your manual, like the one that comes with the car, but your repair manual. It'll show this, it'll show this information. I printed this out from online. If you, can't, if you don't have access to this, then there will be guys talking about it on forums. Just Google something about... Um, 
blink codes with CEL. CEL is short for check engine light. It's an easier way to type in instead of uh, just check engine light, like typing it all out. A lot of guys refer to it as CEL. And this, uh, these blink codes are CEL blink codes. So very quick, very easy way to, uh, uh, to check your check engine light. Anybody can do it. Um, and the grease stuff that's actually, I was going to talk about that too. This grease stuff that's on the connector. That's dielectric grease or dielectric paste. Okay, it's, it's there for a reason. It's there to prevent rust and corrosion, oxidation. It's there to prevent this stuff from happening to the electrical connectors. Okay, this is aluminum. Aluminum oxidizes. It's the same thing as, you know, the effect that rust has on metal. Um, rust is metal oxidizing. And aluminum, that's just oxidation. So, you, uh, I'm going to put the fuse back in now. I'm going to go check and make sure which it did, but I'm just going to show that the check engine light is clear now. So close that. Put the little fuse box back on before I forget about it. I'm going to drive off and lose my fuse box cover. And my expensive jumper. I'm going to them and keep that. And now it's on the ground. I'll pick it up later. Alright, so now I'm going to turn my key again. Turn the truck on. Check engine lights off. Okay, if it comes back on immediately when you turn the car back on, then you know that you have a bigger problem. 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 You have a bigger problem. You have a bigger problem than you would think because it's if it, the quicker that it comes on, the faster. Um, you should probably take it to a shop and get it checked out. Also, you want to keep in mind whenever your check engine light did come on, um, try to. Try to think back, because I mean, if you're watching this video, you probably think it, it probably happened pretty soon. It probably um, like just happened yesterday or something. Your check engine light came on, and you're like, "Oh man, I don't know. How, I don't have the money right now to get it checked out. What do I do?" Um, try to remember, because this would be good in telling a mechanic if you don't know how to fix your car, but you want to go in and say, "Hey, I uh, I ran an engine diagnostic. It came up with this code." Um, try to remember what um, what happened around that situation. Like, did you? Um, and did your car stall out a couple times before, and then, and then your check engine light came on, which is what happened with me. Um, it was the engine shaky. Did you hear any weird noises? Was it bogging down? Were you having trouble accelerating when you tried to push the gas to, to get on the freeway on ramp? Or um, is the engine shaking, idling, really rough? Is it you know is the car shaking because the engine engine is you know. Let's say, say you have a misfire and one of the cylinders isn't firing at all. You know, what's the, these things would be very useful to the mechanic. You know, like, did you hear any strange noises? I mean, that's, remembering that stuff is crucial to not really spending too much in, in diagnostics when you tell the mechanic um, what's going on with the car. Because I don't know how many people have brought me cars that have, um, they've said, hey, it's, the check engine light came on. It was, it wasn't really working like it's supposed to. And it was, you know, they were telling me some, um, some strange, um, they were just saying something strange is happening, it's not running like normal, they weren't, they couldn't really describe in, in accuracy how, uh, how it was, um, how it was acting up. Another thing I just thought about that I should mention, if you are going to take your, your battery cables off, you can notice, you see how these, uh, this one is squeezed together really tight, and that's because that's lead. Um, lead is a very soft metal. When you squeeze lead together, or when you when you bolt lead down like that, it's just going to squeeze and stretch. And um, it's not really a good thing to stretch it like that, because I mean, the farther you stretch it, the less it's going to clamp. If you just get these just snug, just snug enough to where you can't grab it and move it, and if you do, your battery tries to move, then that's fine. You want to get it just that tight. But if you try to shake it and it and it pivots a little bit, um, then you don't want to you don't want to drive around with it like that. You want to tighten it up a little bit more. So don't um, don't over tighten these and don't under tighten them. There's a there's a little Goldilocks zone that, that they kind of have to be at where this has got to be just right. Because you I mean, you can keep tightening this with minimal strength, and it's just going to keep stretching the uh, the lead, and then eventually. Once those start to touch, those points start to touch, um, your battery clamp is not going to be as good 
you're, you're going to have to either pay money to have somebody change it out or try to change it out yourself and do a good job. But um, so that's it. That's changing. That's a quick way, easy way to one um, change your EFI or clear your, your your check engine light by just pulling the fuse out and putting it back in. A little jump ring, the diagnostic ports on Toyota, which is TE1 and E1, I think. I'm already starting to forget. Yeah, TE1 and E1. And you can put more dielectric grease in if you want. Just don't try to clean it and get all of it out thinking like, oh, that stuff's not supposed to be there because it is supposed to be there. There is a reason that all of that grease is in there and it prevents bad connections, you know, from the guy who's trying to troubleshoot it because there's oxidation all over the connector. So, blink codes... Um, if you have something other than a Toyota, most other cars, it's going be like two short and six long. Or sorry, two long and six short, you know, for the same error code 26 that I had. Or in, in my case, it was two short and then six, two short, a brief pause, and then six short. So, um, I hope you enjoyed the pleasant experience of learning how to troubleshoot your car on your own without having to pay some ridiculous amount to a shop that's probably going to rip you off and tell you that you've got more wrong with your car than you probably do because they're just trying to make money. I don't know. I don't trust shops. But, um, yeah. But, anyway, that's, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.